Good morning. Uh, welcome to worship this morning. This is the uh, third uh, Sunday after the Epiphany. We're glad to have you with us uh, today. If you're visiting with us today, we do encourage you, if you do have time as you leave uh, this morning, to sign our, our guest uh, registry uh, there in the narthex. A uh, special welcome uh, to the family and friends of, of Jordan uh, Wolf, who will be uh, baptized in just a few moments. Uh, it's a it's a, actually an exciting time. Uh, Jordan uh, is a uh, eighth grader at Evansville Lutheran School. She's been here since kindergarten, uh, so she's finishing up her ninth year of ELS education, and uh, we're just excited to be able to uh, uh, bring her God's word and forgiveness in holy baptism. Glad to have the family uh, with us and friends with us. Also, a lot of the um, Evansville Lutheran School faculty is with us, because this is also a special occasion today as we begin a National Lutheran Schools Week. Uh, so what a wonderful uh, way to begin uh, celebrating Lutheran education uh, with National Lutheran Schools Week. Um, just a few announcements or a few uh, ideas about that in the bulletin. You'll see towards the back of the bulletin, you'll see more information about uh, National Lutheran Schools Week. You'll also see a listing of our faculty and staff. Uh, we just encourage you this week, of course every day, but especially this week to uh, pray for our school uh, and also pray for our, our staff and faculty as they bring God's word uh, to the students and families of our school. Also with regard to National Lutheran Schools Week, uh, the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod is the uh, largest uh, non-Catholic uh, parochial school system in the United States. Uh, so we're very thankful to have Lutheran education with over 1,900 schools and over 21,000 teachers. Uh, so we continue to keep our Lutheran schools in your prayer. And we certainly know the benefit uh, that they are for us as a congregation, but also for our community and families. Now, having said all of that, uh, someone who's a little bit more of an expert, uh, maybe, uh, we invite forward uh, Mrs. Ashley Waggy, who's our Director of Development and Admissions. Thank you, Ashley, for all you uh, do. Um, and if any of you have any questions about the kindergarten teacher, I know a guy. So, uh, just out of curiosity, uh, just, we don't always get a chance to do this, but if you are uh, part of Evansville Lutheran School faculty, staff, uh, support staff, would you please just stand up? Let's just do that. Since we just want to acknowledge you're here, uh, thank you for all that you're doing. Um, Thank you, and God's blessings to you and your important work uh, in our school. Uh, with that, uh, we now begin our worship service as it is printed. Uh, we begin our worship service with the ringing of the bells.
congregation is encouraged to join with us in the service of holy baptism as it is printed in our blue uh, worship insert. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lord commanded baptism, saying to His disciples in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. The holy apostles of the Lord have written the promises for you and your children, and baptism now saves you. We also learn from the Word of God that we were all conceived and born sinful, and so are in need of forgiveness. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent His Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. Do you wish to be baptized? Yes. What is your name? Receive the sign of the Holy Cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemn the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his hosts in the Red Sea, yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan River of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Jordan according to your boundless mercy and bless her with true faith by the Holy Spirit that through this saving flood all sin in her which she has inherited from Adam and which she herself has committed since would be drowned and die. Grant that she be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise she would be declared worthy of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As Jordan's parents and sponsors, you have a special calling and responsibility to continue to raise her in the fear and knowledge of our Lord, so that she may, together with the whole church, confess our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in whose name she is to be baptized. After she has been baptized, you are at all times to remember her in your prayers, put her in mind of her baptism, and continue to bring her up in the true knowledge and wisdom of God, through regular attendance and worship, and by providing for her further instruction in the Christian faith, so that she may grow up to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of Jesus Christ. This then you intend gladly and willingly to do. God enable you to do this faithful and loving work, and with His grace fulfill what we are unable to do. Amen. Amen. In order to implore the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ upon the gathering of Jordan into the family of our Father, let us with all the family Pray the prayer he gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Together with Jordan, we join in proclaiming the forgiveness of sin and the birth of the life of faith, which God our Father bestows in and through holy baptism. Do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes. Yes, I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son? Yes, Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, 
From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Jordan Marie Wolf, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. The candle on the altar reminds us that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Jordan, live always by the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him to the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. We pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Jordan the new birth and holy baptism and made her a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that, it, she would, that you would keep her in her baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure, she may grow to lead a godly life, to the praise and honor of your holy name. And finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Through baptism, God has added Jordan Marie Wolf to his own people to declare the wonderful deeds of our Savior, who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We welcome you into the Lord's family. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, a child of the same Heavenly Father, to work with us in his kingdom. And you, Jordan, the Lord bless you in all your ways from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Our service continues on page two of our worship folder with confession and absolution. Please stand. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in His mercy has given His Son to die for you, and for His sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by His authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. From the rising of the sun to its setting. In the name of the Lord, to be praised. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. From this time forth and forevermore. The Lord is high above all nations. And his glory above the heavens. He raises the poor from the dust. And lifts the needy from the ash heap. To make them sit with princes. With the princes of his people. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, 
and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to His people on earth. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, mercifully look upon our infirmities and stretch forth the hand of your majesty to heal and defend us. Through Jesus Christ, our Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the Old Testament from Jonah chapter 3. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breadth. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey. And he called out, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God relented of the disaster that he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading reminds us of the importance of making sure that we always keep God first in our life, from 1 Corinthians chapter 7. This is what I mean, brothers. The appointed time has grown very short. From now on, let those who have wives live as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no goods, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it, for the present form of this world is passing away. I want you to be free from anxieties. The unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to please the Lord. But the married man is anxious about worldly things, how to please his wife, and his interests are divided. And the unmarried are 
or betrothed woman is anxious about the things of the Lord and how to be holy in body and spirit. But the married woman is anxious about worldly things, how to please her husband. I say this for your own benefit, not to lay any restraint upon you, but to promote good order and to secure your undivided devotion to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. After John the Baptist was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee and proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boat mending the nets. And immediately he called to them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated as we sing our next hymn.
Please bow your heads and pray with me. Lord, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Heavenly Father above, who gives us every good and perfect gift. Amen. Well, last week, the Old Testament and the Gospel readings both presented the truth of God and how God calls us to be His people. We heard last week in the Old Testament reading from Samuel how Samuel, as a young man, was called by the Lord to call back the people of Israel and to also deliver a message of condemnation to the priest Eli and his sons who were blaspheming before the Lord. The Gospel reading from last week, it told us how Philip went to his brother Nathaniel and declared after hearing Jesus that he had found the promised Messiah. He had found him and this promised Messiah had called to follow Jesus. But Nathaniel could not believe anything good would even come out of Nazareth. And that Jesus, he was astonished by how Jesus described to him where that place, he, where he was when Philip came to him and gave him the good news of the promised Savior and Messiah. God continues today to call us by the word. This is what we know. God continues to call us by the word as he uses holy baptism and the Lord's Supper to receive those means and those gifts of grace that the Lord God gives to us. We saw it firsthand this morning. Jordan, God called you. God this very day has marked you. He has redeemed you as his own. You are the daughter of our Lord. You are now a sister in Christ. For God continues to call to us through his word. God continues to give to us these great gifts of grace yet this very day. But then we move into this week's Old Testament and gospel readings that have been assigned. And they have a great connection for us. Now that we have been called, now what? What do we do after we have been called? The connection is that once we are called by the grace of God, we are now also sent by the Lord to serve. For although the Old Testament and Gospel readings give two drastic disparities of being sent to serve. The Old Testament reading for this morning, it's from the book of Jonah. and We know a little bit about Jonah. But Jonah was told by the Lord to God to go to Nineveh. Go to Nineveh, that evil city. Preach this word that I give to you to proclaim to the people. And did Jonah initially listen to the Lord God about being sent to serve to Nineveh? No. We hear in our Old Testament reading for the day, this is now the second time the word of the Lord came. So what happened to Jonah the first time? Well, Jonah heard what the Lord commanded him to go serve in Nineveh. He was being sent to Nineveh. And instead, Jonah did a 180 and tried to go and run as far as he could away from Nineveh. He went in the total opposite direction. And what happened next? He was nearly killed at sea. He had to be thrown overboard to save the ship and sailors that he was on. He was swallowed by a giant fish and he was literally thrown up on a beach. And this is where we find Jonah in our reading for today. He receives now the word of the Lord a second time. And I think Jonah's ears are finally open and perceiving that maybe I should listen to the Lord God this time. Even though he's wanting to send me to Nineveh, maybe perhaps I should listen and go where the Lord tells me to. So this time Jonah is sent to serve by going to Nineveh. He went to a people he couldn't stand. He went to a people that were his natural born enemies. And yet, he went because the Lord God was sending him to serve the Lord, to declare that warning that was given to Jonah to give to the people of Nineveh. Yet 40 days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Kind of maybe had a little smirk on his face because out of despising these people that they finally got what's coming to them in the ways of Jonah's thinking. In the back of his mind, one might even think that Jonah got a sense of accomplishment. He was hoping the Lord God would not show mercy to the sinful people of Nineveh. And then he was hoping the people would ignore this warning that was declared in his service to the Lord God. 
But the Lord Jonah sent him to serve. And serve he did. And in doing so, the people whom he deemed unworthy were served in such a way that the Lord God changed their hearts. The people of Nineveh repented. They called for a fast and putting on a sackcloth. And the Lord God took note of the people's response to Jonah delivering that message as he was sent to serve them and to serve the Lord. And the Lord God relented the disaster that was preached unto their city. And if we go later in Jonah, we see that Jonah was not pleased by what the Lord God did and how he changed his mind. Jonah thought his service to the Lord was wasted. But the Lord God reminded Jonah how his focus in his sending to serve was not to focus on the result, but to focus on the Lord God did the sending. The Lord God called Jonah. The Lord God sent him to Nineveh. And the Lord God did serve the Lord. Then we turn to our gospel ring for this morning. In the gospel ring for today, we have another calling out and ascending to serve. In this situation, Jesus proclaims that the time for the kingdom of God was at hand. So Jesus, as he's walking by the Sea of Galilee, he calls forth Simon and Andrew, and then later James and John, these two sets of brothers to, of fishermen. And he says, now you are going to follow me and be fishers of men. You were going to be his disciples. So these men, immediately upon hearing the Lord call out, they drop their nets they left their families, they leave their businesses behind, and they immediately start serving the Lord God. But yet, if we read throughout the Gospel accounts, we see how the disciples retreated as they went out and served the Lord God, as they were sent out to serve Jesus by serving others. Yes, there were those times when the disciples were welcome in the name of Jesus, that the message shared was taken to heart by the hearers. But there were also those times that the disciples faced when the word of the kingdom of heaven was ignored and the disciples even faced persecution from their own countrymen, from their own relatives or family, from their own people of the Jewish faith. We have in the Old Testament and the Gospel reading two stark situations, two very contrasting situations taking place about being sent to serve. We have one that was sent to serve and the service brings forth repentance. We have the other had the disciples being sent to serve and their service brought forth different challenges and even closed doors. But in both the Old Testament and the Gospel reading, there is a constant that remains. We are called. We are called to be sent. And we are sent to serve. And we serve the Lord God. See, sometimes in life it seems that people ignore what we are doing and how we serve them. But later on in life we find out they actually aren't ignoring us. Our actions have left a lasting impact and God uses our service to change their hearts and minds. But other times when people are served by our actions time and time again and it looks like it's beneficial to them, it can often be times taken for granted and eventually our service seems to fall flat from their expectations and they fall away from the word of the Lord. But our focus should not be on that end result. Our focus should remain that we serve the Lord for he sent us to serve him. Our focus is on that service entrusted to us by the one who has sent us to serve. For the common factor between the Old Testament reading from Jonah and the Gospel reading of the disciples who were called to be fishers of men and for our lives today is that God sends us to serve the Word. God sends us to serve Him. God first and foremost has called us by the Gospel. God first and foremost has called us by that word, and that word remains true. That word remains unchanged yet this very day. Jesus states in the Gospel of John, chapter 17, as he asked the Father, Father, sanctify them in truth, for your word is truth. For as you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. Jesus is sending us into the world. 
See, God's word remains in our lives. Jesus remains in our lives. The word, it is in us. It's implanted in us. And that word changes us. It's a powerful word. That word that convicts us while also releasing us from the bonds of sin, death, and the devil. The message of the law of God's word, it shows us the gravity of our sinfulness. And at the same time, the gospel of God's word, it shows us the love of Jesus Christ, that we have a deliverer, we have a savior of our lives and the savior of all people. See, we have this complete message as we too are being sent to serve in this world. We too are being sent to go out and to proclaim that word of the Lord, which does not change. So now we are being sent to serve with that same word, that same word that was given to Jonah, that same word that was given to the disciples, that same word that was given to Jordan, that same word that is given unto us. We are being sent out here to serve. We are to be the ones declaring this message in hostile places while being sent to become fishers of men. For Paul writes in Romans chapter 10, for then how will they call upon him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? For it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. And that is who we are. We are the ones who have those beautiful feet because the message that we give, the message that we preach, the message that we proclaim, it is the good news of Jesus Christ our Lord. For the Lord God has called us by the gospel. He has called us through Jesus Christ to live in Christ all of our days. And that is what we are. We are Christians. We are followers of Christ. We are the ones who go out into this world as he sends us forth into this world to proclaim that message that Christ has saved us and Christ has saved all people through his death and resurrection. That's what we heard this morning in the baptismal service for Jordan. The Lord God is not done with you, Jordan. The Lord God is not done with all of you. The Lord God, as it is proclaimed in our baptismal service, He is now sending you so that you are serving the Lord God's name at all times with that fervent spirit, with that joyful hope of the gospel message that has been placed upon our hearts and in our minds through the word that has invited us through that word that takes root in us. And now we have that word of God with us yet this very day. We have the word of God with us throughout every day of our lives. We have the means of grace that God so richly and abundantly continues to give to us through the church. We have the Holy Spirit with us, speaking to us to turn our hearts and minds so that we do not have a spirit of timidity or a fear, but instead we have a, we have a spirit of, of power. We have a spirit of love. We have a spirit of self-control. This is what the Lord God is sending us out with so that we may serve him all of our days. This is truly the good news, brothers and sisters. The good news is that each of us bring different backgrounds and experience with us, experiences with us so that we can go out and declare the word of the Lord in all places and to all people. Peter says it best in his epistle letter. He says, as each of us has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks is one who speaks of oracles of God. Whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God would be glorified through Jesus Christ. For to him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. That's the good news. Our Lord and God, who has called us here to this sanctuary today, he's not going to keep us here. Well, that depends on how long the sermon goes. <laughs> now the good news is that this service is going to end. This worship where the Lord God comes to us, it's going to come to a close. And the Lord God is going to send us out from this safe place, to send us out from this sanctuary, to go into this world. He is sending us out to serve within this world. 
He is sending us out to serve with that message of the gospel, that good news that God's word remains the same in an ever-changing world where shifting shadows come and go. God's word does not change. The message of his word does not change. For the word remains the same. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we're going to go out from this place and we're going to be sent by the Lord. Our Lord who has called us just as he called Jordan this morning. And we're going to be sent to go back into our homes, to go back into our neighborhoods, our communities, our schools, our places of work, wherever we may go. The Lord is sending us to serve there, to serve with the word of the Lord, to declare that word, to let it be known unto us and to all people. The word of the Lord remains forever. We have this message with us. We have this message to share. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the message that we have in this world, that our Lord Christ came to serve us. Our Lord Christ came to save us. And the Lord Christ is sending us He's sending us out so that we may proclaim his glory now and forever. Amen. Now may the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ fill your hearts with comfort as you go out from this place, as you are sent to serve him, as you serve the word. Amen. Our service continues as we sing our next hymn, Faith and Truth and Life Bestowing. Please stand for prayer. Lord of the harvest, as you called Simon, Peter, and Andrew, James, and John to follow you and made them fishers of men, so send faithful preachers of your gospel in our time who will proclaim your saving name with integrity, purity, and truth. Protect them and us from all false doctrine and error. Increase the spirit of generosity to all who support the missionaries, the seminaries and colleges and other institutions of our church for the spreading of the gospel and service to your people. Lead all of us to recognize that we are sent to serve. Help us to hear your word and receive it with thankfulness and praise for repentance, the forgiveness of sins and the strengthening of faith. Bless your servants here at St. Paul's 
including Karen Benefil, Kimberly Benton, Ruth Bashir, Brad and Candy Biggs, and Malachi. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of mercy, as you dwelt on earth among us, you gave signs of your authority by healing those who were in any distress of mind and body. Look with compassion on those in our time who suffer from mental illness, clinical depression, post-traumatic disorders, or any other affliction. Show compassion on the sick, the hospitalized, those who are recovering, and those preparing for surgery or treatment, including Vernon Wells, Adam Garrett, Cheryl Haller, Charlie Gibbs, Shirley Friels, Susie Haas, Nancy Eikenberry, Bill Anderson, Pat Hope, Leora Horst, Debbie Ream, Sue Schmidt, Melva Davis, Edna Fisher, and Amelia Cardin. Grant them comfort in their suffering, uphold them in your mercy, and give them deliverance according to your good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life. Be with those who mourn the loss of loved ones, including Ellis Clayton after the death of his wife, Jerry, and Joanne Grimm and family after the death of her sister, Mar- Marcille Beekman. May they find comfort in knowing that all those who fall asleep in the faith have awakened to the joys of heaven safe in your loving arms. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God of the nations, you commanded us to render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Help us to honor and respect all in positions of authority among us. Guide all state, local, and national governments to wield the power entrusted to them with all humility, dignity, and honor. Uphold in righteousness and health our nation with its leaders during this time of transition. Thank you for the service of President Trump and Vice President Pence, and preserve in wisdom President Biden and Vice President Harris. Bless all those who also serve in the armed forces of our nation, including Brady Kell, Corinne Ravello, Scott Radke, Ryan Skeels, Brittany Ball, Sam Brockman, Andrea Merrick, Michael McDonald, Alex Curley, Isaac Tedder, Scott Lewick, Nick West, Molly Sawyer, Matthew Martin, and Jason Lind. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of life and family. We praise you for the gifts of marriage and family. Be with those who are celebrating wedding anniversaries this week that they might continue to honor you with their faithfulness. We pray especially for Scott and Stacy Mitchell. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, as we celebrate National Lutheran Schools Week, we give you thanks and praise for Lutheran education and especially for our very own Evansville Lutheran School. Continue to pour out your blessings upon our faculty and staff that they would faithfully and joyfully proclaim your love to all students and families. May our school continue to be built upon the solid rock of your word and eternal love. Remind all of us that we are sent to serve others with your gospel of truth. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you know everything we need even before we think it, and you answer us even before we pray it. Therefore, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son. In him being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore praising you and singing.
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful their marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom which has no wind. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
We stand to sing the post-communion hymn. We give thanks to Almighty God that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us to the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.